Dear Mario, this is Shade from the Future. I just finished editing this long ass video and I wanted to say some things. First of all, even though this is a video, it's mostly just me sharing my personal thoughts and opinions about every single 3DS game I own. Unlike all of my other videos on this channel, this is one you can just listen to in the background and pretty much not miss anything. Besides what you're hearing right now, this video is totally unscripted, and I didn't prepare any notes about any of these games ahead of time. Also, keep in mind that I'm not trying to review any of the games in this video. And, like most of you guys, I don't like every single game I own. I haven't even played some of them. So, if it just so happens that I don't like your personal favorite 3DS game of all time, then I hope you can find it in your heart to not type at me in all caps. And I hope we can stay friends. I'll bake a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Shadestool. Peach. Shadestool? You. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Shade, and as you may or may not know, I make video game uh, guide videos, uh, particularly Final Fantasy XIV guide videos. Um, but I also want to do other stuff as well. So welcome to the other stuff. Um, uh, today is September 19, 2020. Two days ago, on the 17th, I believe, an article was published in which a Nintendo spokesperson sadly officially announced the, um, the official discontinuation of the 3DS. Nintendo is no longer manufacturing these, and it is a very, very sad day for humanity. Um, I love the 3DS, like I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this, and um, I just wanted to kind of take this opportunity to just kind of share all of my thoughts and feelings on the, the console and just talk about my entire 3DS game collection. So I don't know exactly how long this video is going to be, but actually this is my, this is my third time attempting to record this <laughs> in different settings. Um, if, you guys are, if you guys are familiar with my other videos, you'll know that this is an entirely new recording setup. And um, I've, I've been doing a whole lot of experimenting and testing. So hopefully this will be the third and final time that I attempt to do this. But anyway, so first I'm going to talk about my, my experiences with the 3DS consoles. And then after that, I'm going to go into my giant pile of games that I have over to my left here. And um, I'm going to start off with like third party games and games that I haven't played very much. And then once I get through that little pile, I'm going to go into the first party games the marios and the fire emblems i don't know is fire emblem a first party game marios and zeldas and all that and i have a whole lot more to say about those so without further ado so this is my original um my original 3ds i got this on the night it was released i was waiting in line at gamestop and i remember before i actually got this turquoise one i was really debating really hard whether or not I wanted to go for turquoise or for black and I should adjust my lighting a little bit um, but I've never actually owned a turquoise anything like this Nintendo I don't think had ever released a turquoise handheld console I'm pretty sure they didn't so I saw this and I was like you know what mm, I like the black but this is this is new go for it and I like it I really like the way it looks there's kind of like a a nice little like glossy a metallic kind of look to it sorry for all the fingerprints yeah it's kind of got this cool little metallic sheen to it, it looks very nice um and uh, i think this was released like in 2011 if i'm not mistaken and um unfortunately i guess during that time i was kind of going through like a little sticker phase <laughs> so i put stickers all over the front of it just to let people know i guess as I'm playing it like this, if I was playing it out in public, I just wanted people to know. Hey guys, I'm a Nintendo fan. Check me out. But yeah, to be honest with you guys, like, this was obviously my first um, 3DS, but I really didn't spend, I, like, I've owned several models of 3DSs over the years. This is probably the one that I have played the least. And it's, I like it a lot. Like, one, one really cool thing that it came with was this little charging stand. This is the uh, the charging port for the 3DS right here, and there are these little these little like metal contacts here, 
And the way this charging stand works is when the 3DS is actually resting on top of here, it pushes down on this little button and that kind of pushes out these little metal pieces that come into contact with those little metal contacts right here. And that's actually what charges the 3DS. And this actually came with the system, which is a first for Nintendo. Uh, this was really cool. This is a really cool little accessory. Like, I don't know, it felt pretty cool. Like I've never like had a little charging stand for a, a handheld console before this. And it was, it just felt, I don't know. There's something weirdly satisfying about this. And I, I really miss this, but anyway, um, so yeah, I didn't really play with the 3DS a whole, a whole lot because I, I don't remember exactly what year it was released in, but not much later as I move all of this shit around my desk, Nintendo came out with their first revision of the 3DS, as they like to do, and that was the 3DS XL. And as you can see here, it was the screens were 90% larger than the original. And I actually don't have my original 3DS XL, unfortunately. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And I've actually spent a whole lot of time playing with my red 3DS XL. Um, if you're familiar with some of my other like Final Fantasy 14 guide videos, you might be able to guess that red is my favorite color. So this was extra nice for me. Like I've never, I don't think I had ever actually owned a, no, I did have my red Game Boy Advance SP. I think this was the only other red handheld console I've ever owned. I know that they actually came out with a red version of this, but I don't think it was available on launch day, which is why I got this one. If, it, if red was available, if if red is an option, I will pick red always, 100% of the time. But anyway, so I don't actually have my uh, 3DS XL anymore. I actually wound up giving it away to my cousin when I got my next 3DS, which was this beautiful masterpiece. This, I think, is the model that I have um, played the most. Um, there are a couple of little scratches and things on here. I think there's, a, I think I dropped it once. Yeah, there's a little, oh, this is embarrassing. There's a little, um, I don't know if the, my, the camera's picking that up very well, but there's a little tiny dent. It's not a crack. It's not broken. There's just a little dent in the plastic right here. I must have dropped it like this at one point. But, um, I played the hell out of this thing. I loved the new 3DS. This, I think, was the perfect size and weight for the 3DS. I do like the 3DS XL, um, but this was just so pocketable. Like, it fits so good in your hand. And I don't have, like, gigantic hands, really. But it just, it's so comfortable to hold. It's not heavy. It's just, it's perfect. I love this. So, like I said, this was my most played 3DS. I will never, ever sell this. I'll never give this one away. I... In case you couldn't tell, I am a huge Pokemon fan. To be honest with you, not so much with the newer games, but the older games. Like, I remember when I was nine years old, I got my first Pokemon game. It was Pokemon Red version, and I begged my mom to take me to Best Buy. I was bugging the hell out of her, and I was just so worried that they were going to sell out of Pokemon Red. And when I got there, they almost had. There was quite a few blue versions left on the shelf. There was one more copy of red version and i picked it up and i was so happy and um i was super into pokemon for many years so when 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 i saw that nintendo had announced this version of the 3ds i saw this old school red version charizard art i was like you know i i have to have this i must have this i need this in my life and um i bought it and i i'm not i'm not the type of person to like keep stuff like in boxes like you know, I don't, I'm not ever going to resell it. When I buy something like this, I'll use it. I'll enjoy it. And, um, I did use it. I did enjoy it. And, um, unfortunately, like I said, my floor also enjoyed it a little bit. What's extra cool about this too, is that obviously it comes with the Charizard faceplate, but it also, and I've never actually opened this because I just, I'm a red version kid. Never actually opened it. Still in the plastic, still in pristine condition, but it also comes with a Blastoise plate. This is what it would look like with the Blastoise plate on it. Pretty nice, honestly. I mean, I love red version, but this is, this is pretty good. So anyway, one nice thing that the, um, the new 3DS models have is they actually have a built-in little C-stick nub type thing. And before 
the new 3DS came out, they actually had a an, an attachment. I never got it. I think it was called the Circle Pad Pro. And basically what it was, was another circle pad that you kind of like, it's a plastic case that goes around it and adds a ton of bulk. And it's kind of like way out here, like in this awkward area. And I think it was just as big as the, the normal circle pad as well. I don't know exactly how it connected to the 3DS, but um, I never I never owned it. And the new 3DS and the new 3DS XL actually just kind of have this little nub integrated for those few games that actually do use this. Um, to be honest, I never really got into playing games that use this so much. Aside from like Majora's Mask and I think Ocarina of Time 3D, I think. I could be wrong about that. And also the new 3DS and new 3DS XL have two extra shoulder buttons, uh, ZL and ZR right here. But yeah, never really, uh, never really had much of a use for them, to be honest with you. So anyway, um, yeah, I I love my Charizard new 3DS. I'm gonna have it forever. But this is not my main 3DS anymore. My main 3DS, I have upgraded a bit, quite a bit, is this freaking monster. This is the new 3DS XL with a special grip attached to it. This grip is made by a company called Cyber Gadget. I had to have this imported from Japan. It cost like $78. Super expensive, but it is so worth it. This thing makes holding the uh, new 3DS XL so much more comfortable. And um, really quickly, all these scratches, by the way, all these scratches are actually on this, this little cover thing that I have on top of here. The 3DS itself isn't actually scratched. This little cover thing, I think it's made of like polycarbonate or something like that. Scratches very easily. But anyway, this grip, works so well and it actually it has a little compartment for you to hold two extra games in here that's super nice so the way it works is like um you rest your middle finger on this little this little protrusion right here you rest your middle fingers on that and you can reach the shoulder buttons super easily it takes a little bit of getting used to honestly because i would normally want to put my index fingers on these little protrusions that's what my hand wants to do but if you do that it's kind of it's kind of awkward to reach the shoulder buttons it's kind of a uncomfortable movement that you have to do but like this it's just it's perfect so yeah the, the, like the reason that i i upgraded to a, th a new 3ds excel and i guess i did it at the perfect time because you know they're not making 3ds's anymore was because this video is about the 3ds so i'm not really gonna get into this too much but the reason i the reason I had to have a grip on this, and I, I should zoom out for this, this thing is gigantic. So this is my Switch Lite with the Satisfy grip on it. To be honest with you, I have never really been big on uh, grips on handheld systems. I never really found a need for them, but after I use this thing, like it's so much more comfortable to play my Switch Lite now. I've gotten used to this. I have gotten used to having a grip. I love it. So. A while back, I was um, I was playing Castlevania: Dawn of Sorrow on my Charizard 3DS, and I was just having to like hold it up like this, kind of prop it up on my pinkies, and it was just I was laying kind of on my back in bed trying to play, and it wasn't it wasn't that terrible, but it was just so noticeably like so much less comfortable than my Switch was. I was just like it almost kind of made me not want to play on my 3DS just because of just because the experience was so much worse than my than my Switch Lite. So, I mean, I love the 3DS. There's a lot of great 3DS games, there's a lot of great DS games. There's a lot of great um, digital games on the eShop still, and I wanted to enjoy those games as comfortably as possible. Hence this thing like it's it's huge, it's bulky, but it fits very well in your hand. It's it's heavier than the Switch Lite, but like that it's just so much more comfortable in my hand. Like I almost don't really care. Like it's not so heavy that it's like fatiguing. One thing though is that it is like and I've got the grip on it which is adding a little bit more weight to the bottom here, but it is quite top heavy. <laughs> Look at that. Like I can, I can barely have it up like this and just have it rest down. Like if I just, <laughs> just a tiny, tiny nudge and it'll just fall over. I don't want to, I don't want to do that too much. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So this is kind of my current end game 3DS and this I'm going to be using for a very long time. 
And actually, I'm gonna have to prop the 3DS up with my mouse. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's enough about the uh, consoles themselves. I'm gonna jump into just talking about some games here. Let me move this aside. And let me move this aside. Great mouse, by the way. So the first game in my uh, big pile of third party slash games that I haven't played a whole lot of is, this is not a third party game. And this actually, I have played a whole lot of <laughs> Animal Crossing New Leaf. This didn't belong in that pile, but I'll talk about it anyway. I spent a long time playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. Um, I've, been a, I've been a fan of Animal Crossing since the original came out on the GameCube. But anyway, uh, I played the hell out of New Leaf. I got all the house upgrades, I paid off my debt. I pretty much did just about everything that you could in this game. And then I went and reset my town just to give myself more things to do. There is one really bad thing I think about New Leaf that actually made it a lot less fun in the long run. Um, and I didn't realize it at the time, but in Animal Crossing New Leaf, you can go to an island and you can get really valuable fish and really valuable bugs really, really easily. So what I would do is just um, get a fishing rod and a net and then just uh, empty out all the rest of my inventory and then go to the island and then just load up on rare fish and bugs and then just sell it all and you can just make hundreds of thousands of bells super quick and honestly like that that made paying off my debt super super easy but i didn't really realize it, realize it at the time but it actually it actually just negated like so much of the rest of the game like once you learn that you can make hundreds of thousands of bells like in a matter of hours like there's just no reason to make bells doing anything else and that just made the game kind of boring to me so pretty much after i like got all the upgrades and stuff i, I ran out of stuff to do and i kind of stopped playing new leaf and I haven't really played it at all, like in the past few years, um, especially now that New Horizons has come out. But anyway, that's all I'll say about Animal Crossing for now. I don't want to like spend too, too much time on this one game. Next game in my pile that I have is a game that I really wanted to like, but didn't. And that's Story of Seasons Trio of Towns. I really like some of the older Harvest Moon games, and I know it doesn't say Harvest Moon on here anywhere, but this is a Harvest Moon game. I loved Harvest Moon 64. I loved Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town for Game Boy Advance, I think it was. And there was another one. I don't remember what it was called, but I played it on PSP. It got, it was, I think, originally a PS2 game that got ported to PSP, and he added the ability to play as a girl in that one. I don't remember what it was called, but I played a lot of that one also. I think my favorite, though, would probably have to be Harvest Moon 64. And I know that, like, Harvest Moon has never been, like, a mature game at all, but, like, Look at this, like, this is so kitty. It's so kitty, and I hope I'm not uh, pissing anybody off, but I could not get into this game. I tried so hard, like, it's just not for me. Like, I'm, I'm a fan of the older Harvest Moons, and I just I just can't get into a game that looks and plays like this. I don't want to hate on the game too much. I'm, I'm sure that there are plenty of people who love this game, and I own it. I, I gave it a shot. I wanted to like it, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. So that's enough about Story of Seasons Trio of Towns. This next game we have is um, a little bit different. Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D. Um, I played the hell out of this game. This is a very fun game. It's very underrated and underappreciated, I think. Basically, all it is is just Resident Evil Mercenaries from Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5 on your 3DS. That's pretty much all it is. With improved uh, controls. You actually have the ability to like lock your aiming direction while kind of like strafing around in this game. And you can reload while moving, which is amazing. That's something I don't think you could do in Resident Evil 4. I don't know if you could do it in 5. But anyway, um, one other cool thing about this game is that it actually has co-op. I don't, I'm sure it has offline co-op. I never tried that, but I did play a lot of online co-op. This is a great game to just pick up and play for a few minutes at a time. Um, if you've got, a good Wi-Fi connection just jump on play someone online I'm sure the servers are down by now the the one bad thing about this game is that yes there is co-op but there is also friendly fire and sometimes you would get into a match with somebody and they would start with an RPG and 
like immediately after the match would start, they would turn to you and just shoot at your feet and kill you just to be dicks. That happened That happened to me like more often than I would have liked. So that was kind of lame, but the game itself was very fun and I, I liked it a lot. I unlocked everything you could unlock, all the characters, all the, all the guns and all, all the stages and everything. And one other cool thing about this game is that it actually had uh, perks that you could use. You had to like unlock them and they all had, there was a bunch of them and they all had different effects. Um, so that just added a whole lot of replay value to the game. And it was, it was, this is just very fun. I haven't played it in a long time to be honest with you, but yeah, great game. One thing that Capcom though, got a lot of crap for when this game was uh, just coming out was that, um, and I guess they did this to stop people from buying and selling it used. You can't actually, to my knowledge, like wipe your game data for this game. If you buy this game used, which pretty much is your only option these days, you would be getting all of somebody else's progress that they made in the game. Like that's just on the cartridge. Like if you bought this game used and you just wanted to like, you know, play it fresh, play it new, kind of can't do that, unfortunately. I think, I mean, unless that got patched or something like that, but I remember that was a big deal when this game was coming up. A lot of people were upset at Capcom over that decision. But anyway, that's enough about this game. Next, we have a game that I haven't ever played, actually. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've seen a little bit of gameplay online. This is codenamed Steam. I don't... Strike Team Eliminating the Alien Menace is apparently what Steam stands for. Very strange. Um, never played this game. I've always been interested in it. The music in this game is very good. I think it's actually done by uh, one of the guys who does... It's actually done by one of the guys who does the music for one of the Advance Wars. I want to say Days of Ruin, the newer one, the like post-apocalyptic one that didn't sell very well, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, very good music in this game. And apparently it actually works with Fire Emblem Amiibo. I don't know if you can see that very well. But apparently you can play as Fire Emblem characters in this game, which is very interesting and strange this game doesn't have anything to do with fire emblem i don't think actually who developed this who made this game yeah i don't i don't know who made this game but uh, apparently it's also compatible with the circle pad pro oh come on autofocus oh there we go i was just too close but yeah um this is codename steam never played it i bought it because i i saw it was on sale for like 15 bucks and i've always wanted to try it i just Never got around to it, unfortunately, but heard good things. Looks good. Sounds good. Might play it someday, maybe. Um, and here's another game that I haven't... I have played this a little bit. I played a, I played a couple of hours of this game. Uh, this is Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never, I've never been into Monster Hunter games. I've, I mean, I bought this game, so I wanted to like it. And I bought a couple other Monster Hunter games, you know, over the years, but I just can't get into these games. It's like the combat is just too slow. And I would get frustrated if I was like almost done killing some boss or some monster that I was hunting, the monster that I was out hunting in Monster Hunter. And like just before it died, it would just get up and run away to the next area and recover like most of its health. And I would have to go chase after it. And I'm like almost out of like healing items and it was just, it was annoying. The combat was also very slow and, and sluggish to me. I I just, I couldn't get into it. I've, I've always wanted to like Monster Hunter games. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people love Monster Hunter. I, I, um, I wish I could be one of you. <laughs> I gave it a shot. Aside from this game, I also did buy a long, long time ago, um, Monster Hunter or Unite or something like that? No, Freedom. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, I think is what it was called, on PSP. And um, played a few hours of that too and I just got bored of it. You know what? There is another game on the Vita, a Monster Hunter-like game on the Vita called Freedom Wars. It reminds me very much of Monster Hunter, but it, the combat is way more fast paced. The game is kind of short and it also has co-op. It, it had online co-op, probably doesn't anymore. And uh, I actually, I, I played um, with a bunch of people online. I actually made some friends playing uh, Freedom Wars online many years ago. And wow, that was a fun times. Like even just playing the same missions over and over again, just playing it with friends, just trying out different weapons and stuff. It was so fun. I hope they make another Freedom Wars at some point. But anyway, <laughs> 
This is about Monster Hunter. Fortunately, Monster Hunter just doesn't seem to be for me. And uh, God Eater 2 is also in that category. I've tried to like God Eater also, but I just can't. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe someday. <laughs> maybe someday. Anyway. Next game is a game that I have played the hell out of. And this this is uh, Virtue's Last Reward, the second game in the Zero Escape series. Um, I think I actually bought this game at the same time that I got my red 3DS XL. Um, I don't I don't remember how I heard about the Zero Escape series. I don't know if somebody recommended it to me or I read about it online or, or something. But um, I played through the first game, the first game in the Zero Escape series. And I actually have it right here, actually. I'll, not a 3DS game, but I went out and bought this. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors on the DS. And um, I played through it and... To this day, this is, <laughs> the autofocus is focusing in on uh, Lotus here. Um, to this day, this this is my favorite visual novel I've ever played ever. And uh, I haven't played a whole lot of them. I've played through the Zero Escape series. I've played all of the Phoenix Wright games. I've played, um, I've played through AI, the Somnium Files, which is actually made by Kotaro Uchikoshi, the same guy who did the Zero Escape series. And uh, I played through Another one called, I think, Ever 17 or something like that. And there's other ones that I would like to play, but those are the main ones that I have played. But yeah, this game is amazing. This series is amazing. Um, and as soon as I finished Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, I went out and I bought this. And I, I'm pretty sure I got the 3DS XL also at the same time. But so as soon as I beat this, I ran... I flew to where Fry's Electronics used to be, but I think is closed now. Rest in peace, Fry's. Um, and I picked up Virtue's Last Reward, and both of these games are amazing. Um, I I think I prefer. It's so hard for me to put one over the other, but I think I prefer. I'm literally putting one over the other. I think I prefer. 999 a little bit to virtue's last reward but this game is so good this game actually like both of these games actually got tears out of me for different reasons at different points like have you ever played a game where you're so emotionally like invested in the story like you get like have you ever gotten excitement tears like from the story <laughs> like 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 i get like uh i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything at all for either of these games but um, there were points in the story where I was just like so into it, like so hardcore into it that I just like teared up of just pure excitement. And I just like, there were many nights where I just totally just stayed up all night just playing 999 and Virtue's Last Reward. Love these two games. They actually um, released a third game to complete the trilogy called Zero Time Dilemma. And to be honest with you, that game's not as good. It's good, it's okay, it's all right, but it's not nearly, it's not on the same level as the first two. Virtue's Last Reward is amazing. And if you're into visual novels, if you like Danganronpa, if you're into Danganronpa at all, definitely give the Zero Escape games a shot. And also, if you are interested in playing the Zero Escape series, uh, I don't have it with me can't show you guys but um the first two games 999 and virtues last Ward, were actually remade it's part of a collection called the nonary games it's basically just the first two games on like you can get it on ps4 i think you can also get it on pc i don't know what other platforms is available on. i hope they they bring it to the switch at some point i would probably buy it again <laughs> but yeah Virtue's Last Reward, very long, very, very long game, a whole lot of reading, very, very, very story heavy, um, great game. I don't want to say more than that because it's so story heavy, but yeah, totally recommend this game. One of the best games on 3DS, in my opinion. All right, so um, next we have a game that I barely played at all, and it's not because I don't like it. Uh, the premise behind this game is very cool. I think it's like, un okay, here's what the back of the box says. Unlock your powers, adventure through time, and save the world. Sounds very much like Chrono Trigger to me, and I love the hell out of Chrono Trigger. I think this, like, the premise of this game is like you go back in time, and at various points 
you make various choices and that shapes like the history of the thing that like, shapes the story so it sounds very cool the only reason that i haven't played this very much the only reason is just because i don't have time to be honest it's made by atlas too the guys who do uh the persona series i played like i think an hour of it and it, it seemed very good but i just never picked it up again and i i definitely do have to go back and finish this at some point i will eventually all right next is a game that i haven't played at all <laughs> and and i'm getting to the point in this video where i'm gonna stop saying that so much but uh this is shin megami tensei 4 apocalypse i don't know anything about this game like i know that this isn't shin megami tensei 4 there's another game called shin megami tensei 4 but this is shin megami tensei 4 apocalypse i don't know if this is like some kind of if this is a sequel or if this is like some kind of like game of the year type edition where it comes with DLC. I have no idea what this game is, to be honest with you. I heard Shin Megami Tensei 4 was good and I bought this game because I found it like really, really cheap one day. And um, I was interested. I've always been interested in trying an SMT game. And there's one that I have played quite a bit that I actually do like, but I never, never played this one. I don't know. Is this game any good? I, I let me know in the comments. <laughs> Should I play this game? Is it good? Is it worth my time? Um, so that's enough about this game. I don't really have anything else I could say about it, really. This game is the only Shin Megami Tensei game that's not a Persona game. The only SMT game that I have ever played. And like I said, I've always been interested in it. And um, it's very similar to Persona uh, gameplay-wise, but it's very dark. The story is very, very dark. And um, it seems to be, just in general harder than Persona, I would say. But yeah, so this is Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux, and I think the original Strange Journey came out on the DS, I believe, I think. But yeah, as you can see, this game is rated M, and it's rated M for blood, language, partial nudity, sexual themes, and violence. I think I've played through, like, I don't really know for sure because I don't know how long the game is, but I pretty much got to a point in the game where, like, I, um, I probably should zoom in so you guys could actually read this stuff, shouldn't I? That would be a good idea. By the way, in case you couldn't tell, this is my first video that's like this, like, with my, my new camera that I'm using up here. So, sorry, <laughs> this video is very amateurish so far. But, um, but yeah, this, this game is very hard. I got to a point in the game where like I have to fight like one of two or three enemies and they're really, really, really freaking hard. So I have to go back and do a bunch of grinding to like level up and stuff. And like, I have to go back and do like side quests to get like better weapons or something like that. Basically, I, I, I came up against a wall and I have to go back and get stronger to get over that wall. And I just kind of just gave up. <laughs> like I said, I, I just really don't have a whole lot of time for games like this anymore sadly but very good very good very dark very weird a little bit tedious at times like i think this guy this this little pig dude i forget what his name was but this guy was a pain in the ass to deal with if i remember right it's been a while since i played this game it's been like about a year or so but yeah good game it definitely does live up to its name it is quite a strange journey. It is so not what I expected from a Shin Megami Tensei game in terms of story, but it's it's good. Weird, very, very strange, but good. But anyway. All right, so that, that wraps it up for my um, pile of third party slash games that I haven't played a whole lot of. Now I'm gonna get into like the real, uh, the real bulk of this video and the first actually you know what this you know what hold on i need to i need to relocate this one hold on a second i lied i lied <laughs> this is going to be the last game that i haven't really played very much of ultimate uh, nes remix i think this is like i, I didn't play this game very much uh, i got it because it was super cheap on sale one day and um I think what it is, is just a whole bunch of mini games, very, very much like uh, the WarioWare series, similar to that, but you're just doing a whole bunch of, a bunch of different like uh, objectives in different games. As you can see, you play Kirby, there's Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers 3 and Metroid and Zelda, like it's just kind of all over the place. 
But anyway, yeah, I just, I didn't play a whole lot of it. It's fun though, good game. Very cheap too, I think it's like, if you can get it new, like $20, I guess, because it's a Nintendo Selects game. But yeah, worth it, I would say. Okay, so let me look through my, my pile of games here. Yes, okay, so that officially ends the, um, the pile of games that I haven't played very much. The rest of these games, I've, except for maybe one, <laughs> I have played quite a bit of. And the first game in this pile is going to be Metroid Samus Returns, um, which I guess technically this is a remake of Metroid 2, The Return of Samus on Game Boy. And I think I actually do have a copy of that too. I don't know if you can see very good. Ugh, these screenshots actually aren't that great. I honestly, I don't even think it's fair to call this a remake because it's like the the overworld is completely different. The maps are completely different. The enemies are pretty different. Like you can't really compare a 3DS game to like, no, I guess you could. I mean, cause I guess like the, the, Link, Link, the Link's Awakening remake, it's pretty much the same as the original Link's Awakening, but this is so different from the original. I don't really think it's fair to call this a remake. If this honestly feels like a completely new game. The only thing that's similar, really, I think, is that um, you're out hunting Metroids, which is like Samus's actual job anyway. She's a bounty hunter. But anyway, uh, yeah, great, great game. Very, very hard Metroid game. This is a huge, huge Metroid game. Um, I played through it twice. I played through it the first time to just blind, and then the second time I tried to beat it under like a certain number of hours to unlock something that you unlock if you beat it in like three or four hours or something. And I, I kind of failed the second time, but really good game. It's so big and there's so much to explore that that gives it a whole lot of replay value. Um, when I first beat this game, I actually remember thinking that it was pretty much on par with Super Metroid in terms of how good it was. I haven't played it in a while and I'd love the hell out of Super Metroid, but yeah, this game is so good. It's, it's hard. It's not an easy Metroid game at all. I thought it was going to be easy to be honest with you when I saw like the trailer for it and I saw that you could just kind of like smack enemies to like stun them and then you could just shoot the hell out of them. It is not, it is not easy. But anyway, uh, that's enough. That's enough of this game. All right, next we have Star Fox 64 3D. And I actually, I wanted to buy this game way sooner than I actually did. I only picked it up a couple of years ago, I think, because it was, you know, a Nintendo Selects game. Basically, it's just Star Fox 64 on the 3DS. Controls are really good, looks better, uh, and it just it plays really well. And um, it's just it's it's a good game. I mean, there's really not a whole lot I can say about it. Star Fox 64 was an amazing, legendary game, and it's portable now. <laughs> I don't really know what else I could say about it. Um, buy it. It's good. It's really good. I guess one thing I could say about like, and this applies to the original Star Fox 2, is that like the game itself is very short. Does it actually show? It doesn't show a picture of the map, but uh, the game itself is very short. There's only like, I want to say like seven or eight levels that you have to play through to actually beat it, something like that. But the interesting thing about this game is that uh, as you progress through the game, there are like multiple paths you can take. Usually what that is, is just there's a main path that you take just by you know beating the level normally and then there's like a secret path that you can take by doing this secret objective like if you do a if you do a secret thing you get the secret path and then you can go see new weird levels where i think one you actually play you're actually in like a submarine or something crazy like that yeah so it's 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 short but it's a game that's got a lot of replay value i love star fox 64. definitely worth it especially now that it's like 20 bucks great game that's it for Star Fox 64 3D. I'm looking at the rest of the games that I have in this pile here. And all of these are games that, almost all of these are games that I have a lot to say about. So let's just get right into it. And the first game in my pile is Fire Emblem Awakening. I want to actually load up my Fire Emblem save file real quick. Where the hell is it? All right, so just a real quick warning. Um, from this point on in the video, there are going to be spoilers for um, all the rest of the games. I'm actually gonna be showing, well, most of the rest of the games. Any, anything that I actually show on my 3DS, um, just assume that there might be a spoiler. Um, so if you don't want to see spoilers, just 
be careful about that. I want to be able to show off some of my um, game data and there really isn't any way for me to do that like and just totally avoid spoilers so fuck it. Let me go ahead and okay so this this is me like at the absolute end of Fire Emblem Awakening. Uh, wow I haven't played this game in so long. Um, I think I put like how long? 48 hours and 59 minutes. Pretty much 49 hours into the game on my first playthrough. Uh, who the heck did I marry in this game? Was marrying a thing? I think it was. Morgan? Who's Morgan? I don't remember any of these characters. Oh, Cordelia. I married Cordelia, and I think Morgan is, like, the daughter? I forget how the kids in this game work. But anyway, um, Fire Emblem Awakening is really, really good. The story is very good. This is actually my first Fire Emblem game uh, ever. Um, I've always been kind of interested in it and, and giving it a shot and um, I fell in love with this game pretty quick. I like it, it's very good. It's a tactical turn-based RPG similar to like Advance Wars or um, I guess Final Fantasy Tactics you could kind of compare it to, sorta kind of. Like as you can see here on the back of the box, zoom in, oh, Jesus Christ, you can kind of see like you play the game on like a grid and you can like choose what spaces your uh, your units move to and you can attack with different like physical attacks or magic attacks depending on like your character and depending on like who you're attacking and all that. And there's a pretty, pretty involved story in this game. Armies clash as the world burns. I'm not going to really talk about the story because that's kind of too spoilery, but um, it's really good. If you're If you've ever been interested in giving Fire Emblem games a shot, definitely pick this up it's very very good so this was the first of three fire emblem games that came out on the uh, 3ds and honestly this is the first one and they pretty much just kept on getting better and better like you could see from one game to the next the things that they improved on i'll talk a little bit more about that as i talk about the other fire emblem games i don't it's been a really long time since i played this game to be honest with you so i don't really remember a whole lot about it but i remember loving it Loving it enough to buy these, Fire Emblem Fates Birthright and Fire Emblem Fates Conquest. And I actually also have Revelation, which is the third game in the, like, Fire Emblem Fates trilogy, I guess. So this actually was my first playthrough of Birthright. And I started, I played Birthright first and then Conquest, and then I played Revelation last, which is... I think the order you would really want to play these games in. As you can see here, I went ahead and I married my sister. Don't judge me. Jesus Christ, did I do all of the... No, I didn't. I think at some point, like, after I had beaten Revelation, I went ahead and I tried to get, like, all of the support, the support conversations. I had a lot of time. <laughs> I had a lot of time back then. But anyway, yeah, so this is the second Fire Emblem game in the... Um, in the 3DS trilogy and to be honest like I've played I played Awakening I've played Fire Emblem Fates and I have played Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia which is a remake I think of Fire Emblem 2 I want to say and I've also played Fire Emblem Three Houses and those are the only Fire Emblem games I've ever played my favorite out of all of them is Fire Emblem Fates I love Fire Emblem Fates a lot it had this weird like hub world thing where like you can actually like you have like your own castle. Oh shit, that's UPS. You can basically just decorate the entire, your like headquarters basically. And one thing that was cool about this game was that you can actually like visit other people's castles and like attack them and like learn skills from like other units. Like your main character can like, I think buy skills if I'm remembering the system correctly from other units. A lot of replay value in this game, I feel like. So basically, like, the overall plot of Fire Emblem Fates is that there's some kind of war going on between um, the nation of Hoshido, which is, like, Fire Emblem Japan, and the nation of um, Nor, which is, like, Fire Emblem, like, Germany, I think. I was worried that basically they were just kind of, like, mirror images of each other, and you're just on side A or side B, but actually... Um, the story and like the maps that you go on like there's they're not entirely entirely 100% different like there's a, there's quite a bit of overlap but it's different enough that I don't feel like these are just kind of like like this isn't Pokemon red and Pokemon blue you know like they're 
the same overarching story, but it's very, they're both very different from each other. And the same goes for Revelation. Revelation is probably the most different. And I would say that Conquest is probably the most difficult of the three. Birthright is the easiest. Revelation kind of falls in the middle. But yeah, like the, the games themselves are different enough that you don't feel like you're just playing the same game three times. I really like Fire Emblem Fates a whole lot. And uh, I don't think that they would do it, but I really wish that there would be like a Switch remake or something like that. That would be awesome. I would totally be down for that. But yeah, like I don't, um, I don't really hear a whole lot of people like talking a lot about Jesus Christ, the amount of, oh God, the lighting, the lighting. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there we go. That's better. Um, I don't really hear a whole lot of people talking about Fire Emblem Fates. That makes me kind of sad. I love these games. Let me load up my, <laughs> let me load up my conquest save and then my revelation save. No, it isn't. This is my revelation save. Okay, so on my revelation save, I went and married Azura in this one. Okay. Well, just because I'm too lazy to actually, like, put in the conquest game, um, I married another sister in this one. I married uh, Camilla. <laughs> like I said, don't judge me. All right, that's enough Fire Emblem Fates for one day. That aside. And next, let's go ahead and talk about... Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. I, like I said, I've only ever, oh Jesus, the light is too bright on this. Does that lighting suck? It probably does. So Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. Like I said, I've only ever played the 3DS Fire Emblems and Three Houses. Um, and this, I think, was a remake. Dude, what does it actually say on here? I don't think it actually says anything about the original game. So I think this is a remake of Fire Emblem 2, Gaiden or something like that, Gaiden, which I don't think was released in the US if I remember right, and I totally could be remembering wrong. But anyway, this game, because it was based on, it was a remake of, of an NES game, was very short, noticeably short, like a lot shorter than like Fire Emblem Fates, let's say. Or, uh, or Three Houses. I don't really remember a whole lot about this game, to be honest with you. This is probably the, the the Fire Emblem that I played the least. Like, I pretty much just played it once and then just never really, like, played it again after that. But it is, I think, the most polished of the... Uh, oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. It is the most polished of the 3DS Fire Emblems for sure. Yeah, like, look at that. Just, like, the, the like, title screen. Look at how good that looks. I don't remember anything about any of this stuff. Hard, casual. I always play Fire Emblem games on casual because I don't really feel like dealing with permadeath. I know that's kind of like a staple of Fire Emblem in general, is that you could lose your units forever. Personally, if I lost a unit that I really liked, I would just, instead of just accepting their death forever, I would just reset the game and just replay the battle. And I don't want to do that that's kind of boring for me like so i just i just play on casual i usually play on hard usually wow i don't remember any of this stuff i super don't remember this order inventory turn wheel does this game not have um like the uh i guess it doesn't this game doesn't have like um what the hell is it called i want to <laughs> almost said social links from freaking persona 3 like relationships i guess no i guess it doesn't I guess it doesn't, and I guess that makes sense since this is a remake of a uh, of a game originally on original Nintendo, and I think I'm pretty much at the end of the game. I think I don't know. So I put hundreds of hours into Fire Emblem Fates, and I put a lot of hours into Awakening. Forty-eight and a half hours into this game, I remember kind of feeling that this game also ended ended kind of like abruptly. I don't really want to get too much into the story, but very polished in terms of gameplay. Looks very good. Uh, soundtrack is amazing. The soundtracks in all of the 3DS Fire Emblem games, along with Three Houses, are all amazing, by the way. But yeah, I just didn't really, um, I wasn't really like as into the story in in this one as I was into the other ones. But yeah, definitely. Um, it was kind of cool, though, like playing through the three 3DS Fire Emblem games just to see like what new things the developers added in and how how they were able to like improve on the, like improve on like the combat sequences and, and everything like that it was i love the 3ds fire emblem games if you like three houses 
Try the 3DS ones, they're amazing. Okay, that's enough Fire Emblem Echoes. All right, next game in the pile is Pokemon Y. I'll be very honest and I'll be very upfront and just say that um, I grew up playing Pokemon. Like I said, I started playing Pokemon when I was nine years old, red version. I have bought at least one version of every single like mainline Pokemon game. But to be honest with you, like I feel like Pokemon, the Pokemon games have been in a steady decline since I'll say generation four since, well, to be honest with you, like I would say actually Pokemon peaked at gen two gold and silver gen four. Personally, I think were the last really good Pokemon games that I've really enjoyed personally. X and Y, I, I beat it. I beat this game, but I wasn't really that into it, to be honest with you. In this generation, they, they introduced something called Mega Evolutions, which I I hated. I, I, I think that was a mistake. I wish that Pokemon didn't go in that direction. I, I wish they would have just kept the original formula, but basically like to kind of, I guess, breathe new life into like old Pokemon. Um, there's a thing you can do now during like mid battle, like if they're holding like a, a mega stone or whatever, you can have your that one Pokemon evolve into a more powerful, powerful version of itself. And sometimes it's type even will change. What I don't like about that, honestly, is that like your Pokemon has to be holding a Mega Stone in order for it to evolve. And I think evolving it actually uses a turn, I think. I could be wrong about that. But um, I don't know. I just think it's I just I just wasn't into it, really. And since since X and Y, there has been some kind of evolution or some kind of special thing you can do mid battle to power up your Pokemon so that it's like super powerful. I just, I'm, I'm not into that, honestly. I don't know, I just don't really like X and Y so much. Um, and I wish that I did. And I've been buying, I have bought pretty much every main Pokemon game except for one. I, I just can't get through Pokemon games anymore. I'm, I, I guess I'm not a fan of Pokemon anymore, which makes me sad, which makes me very sad. <laughs> but anyway, I don't wanna crap on this game too, too much. I don't really like doing that in my videos. But anyway, I'll next let's talk about Omega Ruby. So this was obviously a remake of Pokemon Ruby. I think Mega Evolutions were still a thing. There was some kind of Mega Mega version of like the legendary Pokemons in this game. Something like that. I don't really remember it. I'm kind of fuzzy on the details, but it was all right. I mean, it was it was okay. I Like I said, I wish Mega Evolutions weren't a thing, but it's a remake of a game that was very good and I appreciated it for that. The remade music in this game is very, very good. Pokemon in general just has really good music. I use the Pokemon Bank, I think, on the 3DS to kind of like move all of my Pokemon from one generation to the next. I think right now, I think they're all actually on my copy of Omega Ruby, on my save data for Omega Ruby, I think. I haven't used the Pokemon Bank in a very long time and I have some Pokemon that I actually have had, I think, since Gen 3 or 4. I think I have a Blaziken. I have just kind of moved it from one game to the next. And I think I still have that Blaziken. But anyway, yeah, Pokemon Omega Ruby, good game. All right, I'm back. I just had to throw in another uh, battery. God, this this camera, I love the Sony ZV-1, but this thing eats through batteries like crazy. Um, I went outside really quick just to check if we had any mail and yes, we do. Finally came in the mail. I pre-ordered this at Best Buy, came a day late, but I'm glad that I have it. Apparently, this is a hard game to get right now if you didn't pre-order it. So, for those of you guys who didn't pre-order it, get it eventually, pay the normal price for it, and good luck. I think I'm gonna be doing a Let's Play of these games at some point. I don't know exactly when. I'm kind of um, sitting on a few Let's Plays, a few ongoing Let's Plays for my Let's Play channel right now, but anyway not not really related to this video anyway uh so i was just finishing up talking about pokemon omega ruby so after this we've got pokemon moon this game this game i i'm gonna be straight up with you guys i didn't finish this game and you know i actually want to throw in my copy of pokemon moon i don't even know where it is I never, I didn't finish this one. I played um, a few hours of it 
and it was so ridiculously easy. I got bored of it. Um, I wasn't into the whole like weird like dancing thing that you got to do to like power up your Pokemon in this game. I don't know. It was just Pokemon Moon. Well, just Pokemon in general, really. And I, I, I'm very sad to say this. I'm very sad to say this. And I don't want to like, I don't want to be overly negative. But Pokemon, unfortunately for me now, it's just the games are just not for me anymore. I'm just, I don't, I don't want to say anything stupid like I've outgrown Pokemon because I don't think that's it, really. I don't think I'm too mature to enjoy Pokemon or anything stupid like that. I think it's just gone in a direction that I just didn't want it to go in. But honestly, I recognize that people love the hell out of Pokemon Sword. Um, I'm not one of them, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm not going to say it's a bad game. Yeah, I just wasn't really a fan of Pokemon Moon and Sun. And Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, those are the only main games that I don't own. Anyway, that's enough of Pokemon. Next game. Next games. Two copies of Mario 3D Land. This is the original one that I bought, and then I saw that it was super on sale. Like, Target had some kind of weird, um, like, there was some kind of error, like, in pricing or something, and they were selling certain Nintendo Selects 3DS games for, like, I think, like, five bucks or something crazy like that. And um, this is actually my girlfriend's copy. But yeah, Mario 3D Land is a damn good game. Let me go and find, let me go and find my copy real quick. Which one is my like everything unlocked one? I think this one is. I think this one is actually my little brother's, my little brother's uh, playthrough. What does this button do? Oh wow, here we go. Okay, so yeah, this is mine, I guess. Uh, how long did I play this? Three hundred and twenty-six of these coins, six hundred and seventy-four lives. Uh, I died one hundred and sixteen times. It doesn't show my play time. I don't think but it's it's a lot basically um what's there are a lot of good things about this game the game the gameplay itself is just really really good like there's eight worlds and then there's like an alternate version of each level is that what this is i don't remember what is this special yeah so you you get access to like the special courses which are com completely different and there's just there's just so much freaking game in this game there's just so many levels to play through it's crazy the 3d effect in this game is really nice like this is one of one of the only 3ds games that i would say like pretty much you have to play with 3d on it's like it's just it's a better game with 3d on like it makes it just makes such good use of the 3d all right all right, I'm just straight up just playing Mario now. <laughs> I gotta stop. But anyway, Mario 3D Land is amazing. Uh, it's so fun. There's so many levels to go through. There's so much replay value in this. But yeah, it's just, it's just a really challenging game. It's a very fun, very challenging game. Totally recommend that you guys pick this up if you haven't already. All right, that's enough of you for now. All right, and now we've got a game that I really wasn't a huge fan of and really haven't played a whole lot of. And that is Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I'd never played Luigi's Mansion 3, but I heard that it's amazing. Is it 3? It is 3, right? Because this technically isn't Luigi's Mansion 2. The original Luigi's Mansion on GameCube was really, really good. I think there's a Luigi's Mansion for 3DS. They did make remake the original Luigi's Mansion on something, didn't they? I think they did. Where the hell is my phone? I'm going to look this up. This is going to bug me. They did. They remade the original Luigi's Mansion on 3DS. I never played that one, but I did play the original on GameCube, and I love that one. I love the original Luigi's Mansion. At the time when Luigi's Mansion first came out, I was really sad how they made Luigi like this whiny little scaredy cat. I love Luigi, as you can see. It was just a very interesting game. It was so different from anything I had ever played, and it was, it was good. It was good. I liked it. I like the original Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I didn't like. I didn't like this one. Because in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and you know what? Let me actually just throw it in my 3DS really quick. So I didn't play a whole lot of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I don't know what the hell is going on in the story. What I didn't like about Dark Moon is that it's not like this big overworld that you can just run around and explore, like the original Luigi's Mansion. 
Like, it's broken up into a bunch of little levels. The game looks good. And I don't remember having a huge problem with the way it played, and it actually... Does it use the, uh... Does it use the little C-stick? No, I, it does use gyro, though. This is interesting. But anyway, yeah, so it's like... Like, it's not, you're not, like, exploring a mansion so much as you are completing missions from, like, a menu. And that's that's not what I want from Luigi's Mansion. And I, I don't know because I haven't ever played Luigi's Mansion 3, but I think Luigi's Mansion 3 goes back to that whole exploration formula. I, I think? But yeah, I barely played this game, and once I saw that it was, like, missions like that, I was just like, yeah, I don't want to play this. But it is a Nintendo Selects game, so not too expensive. All right, next game I want to talk about is Mario Kart 7. This is a damn good Mario Kart game. Um, I played the hell out of this game. Let me, where the hell is my, I played the hell out of this game. And one other really, one cool thing about this game is that it actually has um, online play. This was the first Mario Kart that I played a lot online. I've always been pretty good at Mario Kart, but if I play online, I'll get smashed. The people playing the people playing online are ridiculously, ridiculously good. So I did almost, I almost 100% of this game, almost. One thing though that, like, as much as I liked Mario Kart 7, and I do, I really do, one thing that I don't really like about Mario Kart these days is how, like, quickly things can turn around if you get if somebody gets really good luck with items, like how quickly, like you could be doing really, really good throughout the entire race and somebody just gets a blue shell at the wrong moment and it just, it, none of that matters. It all just goes flying out the window. Like you can be almost at the finish line on the final lap and somebody hits you with that blue shell and that's it. There's just no way you're getting first place just because somebody got lucky and got a blue shell. And there's really, it's really hard to, I think you can dodge blue shells, I think, but it's really, really hard to do. I think you can, I could be wrong. I just don't like how, how you can pretty much just totally screw someone over, like just by holding onto a blue shell until the absolute right moment. And then you could just steal the win, like at the very end. Like, it seems like what you want to do in Mario Kart now is not to be in first place what you want to do i think is be in close second place so that you don't really have to worry about blue shells hitting you and basically what you want to do is just try to stay in close second and then just save your best items for like the very end of the race and then just unload on the guy in first <laughs> like if you're in second place you're pretty much safe from blue shells for the most part that seems to be the better strategy than just playing as hard and as fast as you can and just trying to get the best pot like the, the biggest lead that you can but anyway like that's honestly that that reason is why i haven't 100 percent of this game aside from that though very very fun game uh i don't know if you can actually still play this online can you i did i, th I think you can i did play this a lot online with um some old friends that i made playing maple story like years ago i'm just gonna just just jump in a race just to see if i can connect mario kart 8 has been out for oh my god is it actually matching me with people oh my god it totally is oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry you people i'm totally just like ditching you um wow i didn't i didn't expect that the server would still be online you can actually still play mario kart 7 online that's that's crazy but as good as this game is, like, really, there isn't much reason to play this now that Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is out on the Switch. But great game nonetheless. All right, next game. New Super Mario Bros. 2. This is really just, like, if you're familiar with just New Super Mario Bros., it's basically the same exact game, but in this, in New Super Mario Bros. 2, like, there's this weird emphasis on just collecting a crazy insane amount of coins like i think you actually unlock something if you amass like a million coins or something crazy like that jesus christ is that is that getting picked up by the microphone anyone want some ice cream i don't remember this game being a very difficult game it was all right it was good it's a mario brothers game but like i wouldn't put this on the same level as like mario 3d land good 2d side scrolling mario game all right, and now the... No, not the last, actually. Here's another Mario game that I have. 
Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. I I don't know exactly how far I got into this one. I did play it a while. So this is kind of like Mario and Luigi meets Paper Mario. And um, I, I remember this being really, really, really easy. It wasn't bad so much as it was just really easy. Um, and I kind of got bored of it after like, I feel like maybe like four or five hours or so. But I guess the twist here is just that like, the Paper Mario universe crosses with the Mario and Luigi universe and there's like doubles of everyone. You see there's like the two Bowsers and then there's the two Peaches and then there's, there's no, I don't think, I don't think there's a Paper Luigi in this. You actually fight with Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario. I think the way that works is like, you control Mario and Luigi with like the A and B buttons and then Paper Mario is like X or Y or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't bad from what I played. It was just very easy and I just kind of lost interest in it after a while. I love the original Mario and Luigi. You know what? Love is kind of a strong, a strong word. It's, it's good. I like it. I didn't really play, aside from this, did I actually play another Mario and Luigi game? I might not have actually, come to think of it. Wow, were those the only two that I ever played? There was like Dream Team and there was Bowser's Inside Story. I don't, I didn't play either of those. Partners in Time, I think was another one that I didn't play. Wow, I haven't, I need to play more Mario and Luigi games. But yeah, Paper Jam, eh, not bad, but not great. And then the last Mario game that I have here to talk about is Mario Maker on 3DS. And it's a great game, but I really didn't play this that much because, and I got it like very late into the game's life cycle. Not long, not that long after I got Mario Maker on 3DS, like Mario Maker 2 came out on the Switch. I, I haven't ever tried to make a level, but it's good. It's a good game. Honestly though, like just like with uh, Mario Kart 7, like there really isn't any reason to play this that I'm aware of if you've got a Switch. Just get Mario Maker 2. It's just a better game. The original Mario Maker is good, but it's just, yeah. All right. So I've got a few more games that I really want to talk about. But before I get to those, really quick, I want to go over my digital 3DS games. There are a lot of these, so I'm going to keep this, for the most part, a lot shorter than the other, um, the other games that I've been talking about. With the exception of maybe one. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. So let me just go through my folders here. So this is my 3DS games folder. We've got uh, Four Swords, Zelda Four Swords Anniversary Edition. How the hell did I get this? I don't remember. I think this was like a launch game or something like that. Four Swords is actually not, not bad. It's actually pretty fun if you play with somebody else. But I actually did play through Four Swords a lot. So Zelda Four Swords was originally like a side mini game kind of thing that came included with the um, Game Boy Advance port of uh, Link to the Past. And I actually did, with my little brother, play through all of the Four Swords, and when you actually beat it, and it's extremely long, you have to play through it so many times. When you beat all of it, though, you get access to like this secret dungeon at the end of A Link to the Past that's actually really, really challenging. I wish I had that, like, I think I have the game, but I don't think I have my old save data. But anyway, this game that you're seeing here comes from that. Um, I haven't actually played it on the 3DS, but you know, I played the hell out of it on the Game Boy Advance. And then we've got this this game, but I don't even know if this is still on the 3DS eShop anymore. This is Alt Play Jason Roar Anthology. It, I got it for like two bucks, I think. And basically, it's just a bunch of tiny little micro baby mini games. It's a weird game. It's like each game is supposed to teach you some kind of weird moral lesson. And um, I would say it was worth the few bucks that I spent on it, I guess. Um, I played through it once and then I didn't play through it again. It was a weird one. <laughs> and I don't even know if this is still on the on the eShop anymore. I'm not sure. This is Tetris Party Live. Um, I really didn't play this one that much. Pretty much I just wanted, uh, I wanted some kind of Tetris game on my 3DS. Um, but once I got it, I wasn't really blown away by it. It was all right. Tetris, like after you play Tetris DS on the Nintendo DS, which I don't actually have, I wish I did. But once you play that, like it's so hard, like that's such a high bar to, to top. Like Tetris DS was amazing. But yeah, this one was, this one was all right. Cave Story. Ooh, Cave Story. Um, This game has been ported to like every system imaginable. 
and uh, it's very, very hard. There are multiple endings to this game. I played through it once. I didn't... Did I play through it a second time? You know what? I lied. I might have played through it a second time. I played through it once and I got the original... Like, I got the normal, not great ending. The way that you get the true ending in this game is really ridiculous. You have to do some... You have to make a pixel-perfect jump, almost, in this one section. And if you miss the jump... If you miss the jump the first time... You are locked out of the the best ending and you have to do a bunch of other things I, I can't remember off the top of my head to like keep yourself on the correct ending path in the game but i don't like I, I think i got to like the last level on the best ending path and i just couldn't beat it and i was just like you know what? i'm just gonna watch somebody do this on youtube i watched it it was it's a ridiculously hard level to beat and then once you beat the level the boss that you have to the, to fight is ridiculously difficult i don't know i just got tired of trying after an hour or so but um uh, it's a side scrolling shooter a very difficult side scrolling shooter with a weird story that's a lot darker than you might expect just by looking at the graphics but yeah once you beat it once i don't really feel like there's a whole lot of reason to play it again but anyway blaster master zero i love blaster master and i actually I did beat this game, and I actually recently beat this game again because I bought the game again on Switch. And this is a game that I might do a Let's Play of at some point, but basically if you're familiar with the original Blaster Master on um, NES, this is the same exact kind of game, but it's actually got its own like story, like fleshed out story. That's actually pretty pretty interesting. It's pretty challenging in parts. Um, there's like t what's interesting about Blaster Master also is that there are kind of like two there are two like modes of playing this game. Um, there's the normal like side scrolling portions where you're just in the in the Blaster Master tank and you're just it's just a side scroller. And then there's this there there are these like top down sections where you get out of the tank and you're just kind of on foot. You know what, there's a lot I could say about Blaster Master Zero, but all I'll say is that if you're a fan of side-scrolling platformers, if you, especially if you like the original Blaster Master on NES, definitely give Blaster Master Zero a shot. And definitely, definitely, definitely play Blaster Master Zero 2. I like Blaster Master Zero 1 a lot, but Blaster Master Zero 2 is amazing. It is, like... It takes all the things that Blaster Master Zero, like all the new things that Blaster Master Zero did right, and it just expands on it so much. It's a challenging as hell game too. Yeah, Blaster Master in general is just amazing. Can't say enough good stuff about this. And the story in Blaster Master Zero 2 is really, really good too. Excite Bike 3D Classics. I didn't buy this game, I don't think. I think I got this for free. Um, it's just it's basically just Excite Bike with some 3D effects thrown in. I don't know. I never really played Excite Bike a whole lot. It's Excite Bike, I guess. There's not really much more to say about this. This game, Paris Scientific Escape, Cruise in the Distant Seas. Never played this game. I only bought this game because I, I saw that it was a visual novel on the 3DS. But once I like saw, I, I don't know why I bought it. I think it was on sale for like two bucks or something like that. But don't know if it's any good. So if you played it and you know, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> I think there's a, a sequel to this game also, but I never played. Faerun. Um, I played this for a few minutes and got bored of it. I don't remember. I think this was kind of like... um. The way it plays is similar to Zelda 1. I played it for a few minutes. I think I got this on sale too. Speed? What the hell is this? Speed Exit Hyper Edition. I've never played this. I don't know what this is. Azure Striker Gunvolt. I played a little bit of this and I wanted to like it more than I did because it seemed very, um, very Mega Man Zero-like. Ah, I wasn't into it so much, I'm sorry to say. And Mighty Switch Force and Mighty Switch Force 2. I like the I like the soundtracks of these games. These games have some pretty damn good music. I don't know, the, the gameplay was a little bit a little bit eh for me. I'm sure they're good games though. Witch and Hero and Witch and Hero 2. I don't know why I own these games. I think I played Witch and Hero. I think I played one of these for a few minutes and it was okay but I don't know why I have them. 
Are they good? Let me know in the comments. Okay, the rest of these games are all just like virtual console games. So let me go through these really quick. So I've got, because I have a new 3DS, I'm able to play um, Super Nintendo Virtual Console games. And I've got Mario Kart, Super Mario Kart, Link to the Past. I've got Super Metroid, of course, Mega Man X. Um, I've got Earthbound. I've got Earthbound? Oh, that's awesome. I have Kirby's Dream Course. Love Kirby's Dream Course. Uh, Castlevania 4. And Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. Very, very good games. I, I played the hell out of Mega Man X. Mega Man X 1 is like the embodiment of my entire childhood. It is so good. All right, so uh, NES games. I've got Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. I've got Zelda 1, 2, and I've got Metroid. I've got Ice Climber, Balloon Fight, Donkey Kong Jr., Punch-Out!, Yoshi, Wrecking Crew, and NES Open. And I think most most of these games I think I got for free in the Nintendo Ambassador program. They just gave out they just gave you free games in that thing. That thing was amazing. And I've got a folder for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Got a lot of games in here. Mario Land, Mario Land 2, Kirby's Dream Land, Kirby's Dream Land 2, Game and Watch Gallery. I love Game and Watch Gallery. I can play Fire for hours and hours that game is hard as shit donkey kong pokemon red version pokemon blue version oh you know what i didn't actually buy these i actually got these for free um because i got this this actually came i think with download codes for red and blue version and um i just transferred i've been transferring like my system over from one 3ds to the next so that's why i've you know that's why they're on here uh, Kirby's Star Stacker. Never played this. Gargoyle's Quest. Don't think I played that one either. Mario Brothers Deluxe. I owned this. Well, I've owned. I've owned like almost. Well, I've owned a lot of these games like physically at one point or another. But I remember this game in particular, Mario Brothers Deluxe. I played the hell out of this on my old ass purple Game Boy Color, just like this one here. Love this game. Basically, it's just Mario Brothers 1, but it's on Game Boy Color. And then Link's Awakening DX, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Pokemon Crystal I've got. Pokemon Trading Card Game. This game is so freaking fun. And, um, God, I played a lot of this game, too. Pokemon Crystal is amazing. Pokemon Gen 2, like I said before, I think was the absolute peak of Pokemon and um, I, I don't want to spoil it, and I know that I spoiled a whole lot of games already, but I don't want to spoil this one for anybody who hasn't already played Gen 2. Gen 2 is amazing, and I love it so much. And then we've got Yoshi's Island, Mario Kart Super Superstar. This, this Mario Kart, I think, was the hardest Mario Kart that I ever played, uh, and it's this was a Game Boy Advance game. Uh, very hard to play Mario Kart uh, on a D-pad like that. And this was actually a very fast-paced Mario Kart too. so... I was, you know, it was extra hard for that, but good game, good game, good, very difficult Mario Kart. Metroid Fusion, holy crap, this is my f yes, I'm gonna have to put this above Super Metroid and uh, Samus Returns. This is my favorite Metroid game ever made. I love the story and the atmosphere in this game so much. The gameplay is just fucking rock solid. Fun fact, I have actually done Let's Plays for this game on YouTube twice. None on my... I ha, Not on my recent channel, but on my old channel, I think the first Let's Play I did was Metroid Fusion. And on my old, old channel, the first Let's Play I did was also Metroid Fusion. Just because I love this game so much. And I will do another one eventually, at some point. And then we've got Zelda Minish Cap. Great game weird Zelda game. It was developed by Capcom, I believe, who also developed Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Very weird Zelda game, but very good. Uh, Wario Land 4. I haven't actually played it. I played a lot of Wario Land. I've beaten Wario Land 1, and I've never really played much of 2, 3, or 4, and I, I think they're... I've heard that they're very good. Kirby. What is this? Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Never played this one. Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones. I didn't realize I had another Fire Emblem game that I haven't played. Might have to try that out at some point. 
Mario vs. Donkey Kong, haven't played this one. WarioWare Inc. Mega Micro Games. Um, haven't played this. And F-Zero Maximum Velocity. I remember this being a very early Game Boy Advance game that I really wanted to play. This is one of the games that like I saw screenshots of before the Game Boy Advance was released that made me really excited to have a Game Boy Advance. Never played it though. Come to think of it, I've never played any F-Zero game. Actually, no, I take that back. I played a little bit, I think, of the Super Nintendo one. I played a tiny bit of that, like minutes of it, and it was really, really freaking hard. All right, and now uh, Sega Genesis games. Only two games in here. Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic 2. You know what? I really like the old school Sonic games a lot. I love Sonic 1, 1, 2, 3, and Sonic and & Knuckles are probably my favorite Sonic games. You know what? No, you know what? Sonic Adventure 2 was amazing. I, as ridiculous as those cutscenes and, and as ridiculous as the story was, I really like, I enjoyed the hell out of Sonic Adventure 2 and I owned Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on GameCube. And I played the hell out of that and I really, I really enjoyed that a lot. Don't think I ever beat Sonic Adventure 1. You know what, I might actually have it, I think I have it on PS3 actually, come to think with the director's, uh, director's cut. But anyway, uh, Sonic, Sonic 1 and 2, great games. I don't think they ever actually released Sonic or Sonic and Knuckles on the 3DS eShop. I could be wrong about that, but I think I would have bought them if they did. How do you play Sonic 3? How would I go about playing the old school Sonic games now? They're probably on the eShop on the Switch, I'm gonna guess. I don't know. I don't know, but I miss Sonic 3 and I miss Sonic and Knuckles. And I really miss Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, that would be fun to do a Let's Play of at some point. That's such a ridiculous game. But anyway, that's it for the, right? That's it for the, what is this, Pokemon? What's in here? Pokemon Bank. Oh, there's an update. I have to update this and Poke Transporter and the Pokedex 3D. Oh, this was, this was such a weird app that I downloaded. Demos, I've got demos of a few games. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, Tomodachi Life, The Denpa Men, Pokemon Sun and Moon, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Harmonite, Mario & Luigi Dream Team, and Smash Brothers for 3DS. I don't remember any of these. Oh, there's like limited uses. I guess I played them. I guess I must have. There's an update for the Smash Brothers 3DS demo. What the hell? <laughs> All right, so the last digital games that I have to talk about here before I get into my final physical ones are all Phoenix Wright games. And I'm gonna go actually from newest to oldest. Phoenix Wright, Spirit of Justice. I think this was the, the new Phoenix Wright game where they finally, where Maya finally came back. And she was like older now. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I, I wasn't a huge fan of Spirit of Justice or of Dual Destiny, especially Dual Destinies. I wasn't, I wasn't feeling this game at all. I didn't really like Athena Sykes' character. I didn't really like her I just didn't really like her as a character very much and her whole thing that she was struggling with. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. It's not really necessary. And the whole like the 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 big plot twist at the end of Dual Destinies, I thought was kind of dumb. I wasn't really into this game very much. Uh, Spirit of Justice, I liked a little bit more, but I wasn't super into this one either. Um, this one goes, well, actually both of these are kind of, both of these games have to do a lot with Apollo Justice, especially Spirit of Justice. This one really goes into his backstory a lot. So yeah, Spirit of Justice was okay, was a little bit better than Dual Destinies. I would say, I, I personally, I didn't really enjoy either of them that much, but I love the hell out of the original Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy, but there's something wrong with it. There is one thing that's wrong with this, and it's that it isn't this. It's that it only includes the first three games. The first three games are amazing, but it should have included the first four games because the first uh, Ace, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is also very, very good. I would say, honestly, it's not, it's not as good as the first three games, but it's it's right up there, I would say. I really enjoyed uh, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney a whole lot. If I had to rank these games, I would say my f absolute favorite 
Phoenix Wright game would have to be Phoenix Wright 3, and then 2, and then Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, and then 1. I think that's the order that I would put these in. So the cool thing about Phoenix Wright games is that there's like 4 or 5 cases per game, and there's this like, and each case is its own separate thing, but each game has its own like big overarching story. And that, that, that kind of ties the cases together in some way, or like ties at least two or three of them together. The story to Phoenix Wright 3 is amazing. The story to Phoenix Wright 2 is amazing, but not quite as amazing as 3. Uh, the Apollo Justice story is, is very good, I would say. And then the first one is kind of, it's good, but it's a, it's a kind of just, it's a little bit too basic. Like it's good, but it's not on the same level as the other games, I would say. It's still good though. It's still very good. Phoenix Wright, if you're into um, visual novels at all, if you if you don't mind a game with a lot of a lot of reading that really requires you to think and figure things out on your own, then give Phoenix Wright a shot. The trilogy is also available on the Switch. I really wish that they would have included this game in it too. For a while, I was considering getting the trilogy on the Switch, but to be honest, like, and I guess I, I could just show you this really quick. Let me actually just go to where I am right now. Oh, and what's, what's also cool about this too is that the trilogy on the 3DS, at least, also includes the Japanese version of the game. Like, the voices and the text are all in Japanese, so I, I can't play it like this. It would be cool if you could just switch the voices, but there really aren't a whole lot of voices in the game to begin with, so that's fine. And the, vo the English voices are totally fine. The Switch version looks just fine, but as you can see, like, I can actually just like, there's like a whole like touch-based UI that I can actually mess around with. There's like buttons up here. I can press L and R to like do all of this stuff. Like there's buttons here that you can press. All of these are actually just like touchable buttons. Like I have never seen a game make such good use of the touchscreen uh, as Phoenix Wright, as the original, Phoen well, as, as any of the Phoenix Wright games. Like, yes, you can buy the trilogy on the Switch, but seriously, like, I, I, not having this awesome user interface, the touchscreen, I think this adds to the game. So I, I think this is actually a better version of the trilogy. Um, than the switch one, which is you know more up to date. I think the visual I think like I think the visuals are um, a bit updated on the switch version too, but like but I think this looks really good. I like the way this looks a lot. I wouldn't want it to look any different from this. But anyway, I love the original Phoenix Wright games and um, not as much a fan of the newer ones unfortunately. but there you go. So that's it for all of my digital games on the 3ds go ahead and put this away uh jesus christ <laughs> I have too many games lying around before i get into my final few games and i'm sure by now you've realized that there are some very important games missing from my collection that i haven't talked about probably know what they are before i talk about those i need to stop the recording a little bit because um, when I record these videos, I have to turn the air conditioner off and it gets freaking hot in my room. I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit, so I'll be right back. Okay guys, here we go. I've been recording for about two and a half hours off and on. At this point, I am pretty exhausted and I've got three more games to talk about. And here's the first one. And I'm sure you guys all know which ones these are. I actually have two copies of this. <laughs> I own two copies of this because I gave my first one away to my cousin when I gave him the uh, red 3DS XL. So I gave it to him and then I saw this was um, on sale at Target for like a few dollars. It was some kind of weird, weird glitch. And uh, I picked up another copy of it just so I could own a copy of this game. This is not my absolute favorite Zelda game of all time. It is a lot of people's favorite Zelda game, and I definitely understand why this game is absolutely freaking legendary. The uh, 3D, the 3DS remake is very, very good. Um, they updated the visuals pretty, pretty well. Uh, it plays very good. And one, one other really cool thing about the 3DS remake, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna try to 
make that focus focus actually you know what why don't i just throw the game in the 3ds that would be way easier hold on ah i gotta zoom in on this i gotta zoom in on this that looks so good the 3d is off by the way Dude, this game looks so good. Oh, what? I don't have any save data on this? What? Why don't I have any save data on this? Crap, I can't show you. Why? Is it on my original 3DS? My green 3DS? Did I not transfer that over? Crap. I bought um, Ocarina of Time 3D on the same day that I got this original 3DS. And wow, I have to zoom in so much more because the screens are so much smaller. Is my data... No, it's not on here either? Ah, I have no uh, cleared game data on here. Why? What? I know I beat this game. Okay, well, that sucks. Oh, you know what? <laughs> now that I have this out, actually. One other weird little quirk about the 3DS. Let me actually grab the stylus for the new 3DS XL. This is the stylus that um, the 3DS XL, the new 3DS, and the new 3DS XL, this is the same kind of stylus that they all use. The original 3DS, for some weird reason, had this like telescopic design and it got to be like really long and it, it worked, it was fine, but it was it, like, this is just like, the, I, you know what? Now that I hold it like this, this really is uncomfortably short. This actually is a lot more comfortable. You know what? Now that I really, now that I really kind of mess around with it, this telescopic design is kind of cool. I kind of like it, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, what I was hoping to show you guys in game was the. Um, it's kind of hard to see in this blurry ass picture because my phone is refusing to cooperate, but. So in the 3DS remake of Ocarina of Time, B was your sword button. So X and Y were reserved for items. A was your action button. Action. <laughs> A was your action button. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice autofocus. Oh, this camera is awesome. A. So B was your sword. A was your action button. X and Y were reserved for items. But what was extra cool? about the 3ds remake is actually the corners here the corners of the touch screen the four corners you could actually just tap to use other items and you can just set these to whatever so so in this screenshot right here this person has the bow set so you can't by pressing a button switch to the bow but if you just tap the bow icon link will equip the bow so basically you can set six, you have six slots for items that you can just change to be whatever you want. And that was awesome. I don't know if the Ocarina one was, you could change that, I'm not sure. That one might've just been set, preset, I'm not sure. But very, very cool design. It made the game much more playable. But anyway, like this was such a revolutionary game for the Nintendo 64, like seeing a Zelda game in 3D, even though it was like polygonal as hell, seeing it in 3D for the first time, the Z targeting system, like it was just, it was revolutionary. There's no other word for it just other than revolutionary. Just like seeing Mario 64 for the first time was just, just mind blowingly amazing. Mario 64 for the first time. Ugh, I'm so wanted, I wanna play this game so bad. Ocarina of Time is amazing and you must play it if you haven't already. Oh, um, Fun fact, I I think I think if you beat this game, you get access to the master quest. I think you know what I'm gonna look that up. I, I don't want to assume. So basically, the Ocarina of Time master quest was just like basically just again Ocarina of Time, but with much more difficult um, dungeons, and I think the enemies do more damage too. Very very fun, very cool. So anyway, that's enough about Ocarina of Time. God, too many games. I don't have enough space. I don't have enough space in these two little cases for all of my 3DS games. They're just kind of spilling out right now on my desk. But anyway, that's enough of you for now.
Next game I want to talk about is Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Zelda A Link Between Worlds, um, I think a lot of people would call it a remake of A Link to the Past, but it really isn't. The only thing that this game and A Link to the Past have in common, and it's a big one, is that they're set in the same Hyrule. The overworld map and I think the dark world map are almost identical. They're very, very, very similar. I don't think that they're exactly the same. The dungeons are totally different, completely different. Every Zelda game has to have some kind of unique gimmick to it. The gimmick in this Zelda game, I call it a gimmick, but it's, I don't know, quirk or whatever. The, the, the thing, the new mechanic in this Zelda game is that Link is able to, like, merge onto certain walls. And you can, like, kind of, I think Mario in the second Paper Mario game can basically do the same thing. But you kind of just attach yourself onto the wall and you kind of just become like a cave painting. And you can walk along walls like this. And I'll be honest with you guys, like the first time I saw this, I thought it looked so dumb and gimmicky and stupid. I also thought the same thing when I first saw uh, Wolf Link in Twilight Princess. But this game is amazing. It really is. Like the level design in this game because of this mechanic is so interesting and cool. Like this game is just, it's good. It's not a perfect game and it's definitely not my favorite Zelda game though. And as cool as the level designs are, I'll be honest, like I kind of got, I wasn't really super into the fact that basically you're walking around the same Hyrule as in uh, A Link to the Past. I would have liked a new Hyrule with just, I, I would have liked something new, but the worst part of this game is the fact that the way you get items in this game, you, how, how did that work actually? You know what? Let me, um, let me actually just throw in my, my a link between worlds into my 3ds really quick ah that's so good okay i gotta hide something off screen for a second but this this save file was back before i i went by the name of shade I was still wolf back then with uh, V's instead of a W. It was so cool. And I have maxed out rupees here. Uh, yes, I have maxed everything. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this. I completely 100% of this game here. You know, I guess I can't really show you on this file, but uh... oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Welcome back, Mr. Hero. So basically, you can actually buy all of the items you you find items in dungeons yes and they're like the, the like the quote-unquote like permanent version of your items but you can actually buy or i guess rent technically any item any of these items pretty much from this guy here you can just rent them you have to pay a lot of rupees yes but you rent them and if you die in a dungeon like you lose them all which is i always thought was kind of dumb but i like i i beat this game 100 percent of this game without dying once like this, this game is kind of easy, but basically the, the fact that you can go and just buy the items, basically, and just kind of have everything like at the beginning, I, I don't think that was a good idea. I think that was kind of lame. I, I just think that the ability to buy items like that, just it, it made the, it made getting through the dungeons a lot easier than it should have been, honestly. But aside from that, like the game itself is very good. The dungeons great great level design but that's really my only criticism about the game kind of a big one i think but but yeah great game anyway but now we need to talk about a game that i think personally i think it's a better game than ocarina of time and i think a lot of people will agree with me on this majora's mask for the 3ds this game is so good there's so much replay there's so much to do in this game there's so much like side questy type things to just get lost in in this game. Um, I'm just gonna throw this in really quick. I was really surprised to see that this game got remade on the 3DS. Pleasantly surprised, very pleasantly surprised. But I think that they handle like the UI and the inventory 
in the same way that Ocarina of Time did, which is the perfect way to handle it, I think. I've beaten this game on... I beat it on Nintendo 64, and I've beaten it on GameCube. But I never beat it on the 3DS. I got to... I got pretty far, as you can see. I just need to complete, like, one more dungeon. But once I got to this part... I pretty much, like, did like most of the things that I can do up to this point. But once I got to this part, oh, and this game actually does use the little C stick nub. Oh, wow, that's that's crazy. Once I got to this part, and what's cool also is that the 3DS, uh, the 3DS Zelda games, oh crap, use gyro controls to aim like your hook shot and your, why won't you die? And your bow and arrow. Why are you still alive? You should be dead now. Keep away from our house. My father is not one of you. I don't know what to do here. I don't know how to get into this place. Do I jump up here? Climb up here? What do I... I don't know. Yeah, anyway, so I, uh, I, I haven't figured out what the heck to do here. I don't want to look it up. I want to figure it out on my own. I've been running around this area trying a bunch of different things for way too long. But I'll figure it out eventually. I'll, 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 I'll finish this game again for the third time eventually. This is actually a game that I definitely want to do a let's play of at some point. There's a list of ongoing events right now. What's really cool and unique about this, this Zelda game in particular is that Majora's Mask takes place over the course of three days in game and a bunch of different things happen at different times and different places during those three days. And the gimmick to this game is that you can, uh, turn back time to the beginning of the three days so like basically basically the the way the game plays out is like you reset time to the very beginning of the first day and then you go off and try to you unlock a level and you try to beat the level before the three days runs out what i do typically is i i unlock a level and then i reset time and then immediately after i reset time i just go into the level complete it and then after I complete it, I'll reset time again to the beginning of the first day and I'll unlock the next level, reset time again, and then go in and do the level just to give myself like plenty of time to do everything. But anyway, what's really cool is that like at different times on the different on different days, different things will happen, like missable events. And um, that is such a cool mechanic to a game. So I'm, I'm, I'm super interested in Majora's Mask. I would love to do a let's play of this game at some point, mostly so that I can just do like a real deep dive, a real deep dive into this game's design and just kind of like pick it apart as much as I can and just really just over analyze the hell out of everything. I am super interested in this game's design and I really want to take it apart and just analyze the hell out of it. I would love to do that at some point. I don't know when that would be, but eventually. I, I would, I, geez, I could sit here and just go on and on about Majora's Mask like for hours and hours and hours, but I'm gonna just exercise some self control and stop myself here. Okay, and that is officially every 3DS game I own, I say as I look around my room looking for more. I think that's really everything. That's everything, everything. Holy crap, I've been recording for like three hours. Wow, this, this video wound up being so ridiculously long. I have so much editing to do. But anyway, I, I just want to close by saying I love the 3DS and I hope that was um, I hope that was obvious to you guys just by watching the video. I know that this was long as hell, but I I am passionate as hell about the 3DS and just just these old Nintendo games in general. I love video, just video games in general. I. I, I'm just so passionate about this stuff. So yeah, if, if you guys have any like questions or comments or criticisms or anything at all that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments. I love talking to people in the comments, especially about video games and stuff like this. Um, <laughs> if there were any games that that I wasn't a huge fan of in this in my list of games that you really like, I apologize. Like I said, I, I wasn't trying to like really take a crap on any games in particular. But yeah, I mean, I don't. I can't like, I can't love every single game. God, is there anything else I want to say? Not really. It's, it's almost eight o'clock. It's really hot in my room. 
and um, I gotta stop this recording. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I had a whole lot of fun making it and just gushing about all these games and all this stuff. I'm a huge video game nerd, in case you couldn't tell. Let me know, please, in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. I have a lot, <laughs> a whole lot of other games that I could talk about like this. Um, these were all of my 3DS games, but I'm looking over to my left, um, and I've got so many. I've actually also got, I've got a whole giant plastic container full of PS3 and PS4 games that I could go on and on about as well. So yeah, if you guys are interested in something like that, let me know. I would be happy to make more videos like this. And um, I hate to ask this, but if you honestly, genuinely, actually like the video, please give it a quick like. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell so you get notifications whenever I upload anything new. But anyway, if you could do that, that would really help me out a lot. I would really appreciate it so much. I put a whole lot of time and effort into making these kinds of videos, and I'm trying I'm trying very hard to grow the channel um, as much and as quickly as I can. So thank you guys for your support. You guys have always been really cool in the comments. But anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or any kind of feedback at all that you want to leave please feel free to do so down in the comments um i do my best to respond to as many as i possibly can i've been incredibly busy lately so i haven't been able to respond as much as i would like but i'm doing my best all right <laughs> i am uh, i am out of shit to say so thank you guys again and i'll see you in the next one later Alrighty, Albreda, what do you, with your thank credit here, what do you have to say? Eh, you want me to introduce you to the resistance? Ha, why the hell should I do that? Give me just one. Why are you so mean to me? Why? We're both Highlanders, bitch.